When you first start getting serious about your photography, one of the most common pieces of advice you're given is to develop your own style. And as tips go, this is about as useful as advising a novice surgeon to only take out the bad bits. It's advice so vague and pointless that it renders the sentiment meaningless. So in this video, I thought I'd look at why developing your own style is a good thing, how you might go about developing your own style, and more importantly, how to recognize it when the bloody thing eventually arrives. If you're a painter, it's almost impossible not to develop your own style. The nature of painting, the media, the subjects, the processes, the paints, the brushes, and the skills, or otherwise of the artist in question, mean you instantly get your own style whether you want it or not. It might not necessarily be a good style, but it's still yours. But photography offers far more definite outcomes than painting because there's a precise mechanical device in between the space between the photographer and the photograph rather than a brush. And the thing with mechanical devices is that they're purposefully designed to function in a consistent manner. So if two photographers photographing the same scene have the same camera with the same settings and the same lens, they'll produce a near identical photograph. This consistency in camera technology is important if you're a professional photographer, because you need to know that if you use that camera with that lens, with those settings in that environment, then you will take a correctly exposed image. And so the most popular equipment in a photographer's life, apart from the camera itself, obviously, are accessories and add-ons that can alter that consistency. So we use ND filters to reduce the amount of light hitting the sensor because we want to take a longer exposure than the camera will allow on its own. Or we use a flash to artificially light a scene because the camera wouldn't be able to take a correctly exposed image on its own or we might dig right into the camera's guts, take it to pieces and switch out the infrared blocking filter for an infrared amplifier. So to sum all of that up, we use an array of techniques combined with specialized equipment to make our photos look different to anyone else's. And so logically, the further you get from that baseline consistent straight out the camera look, the more obvious your style will be. Developing your own style as a photographer is not as simple as choosing one like you'd take a tin of beans off the supermarket shelf. It's not usually something that materializes the first day you pick up a camera. It might take years to evolve, but sometimes it does occur during a blinding flash of inspiration or a eureka moment. It also bears pointing out that developing your own style is not something you can rush or even force. You simply have to put in the hours and use your camera as often as you can. So let's talk specifics. Once you have built up a sufficient body of work in your photography, you will start to pick up on certain themes. You will be able to identify photos that you've taken that have a specific look, which were taken in a certain way and which feature a certain location. Whether you are conscious of it or not, this is your creative brain leading you in a specific direction. If you've never done it before, go back through all your old photographs and as you flip through them, you'll start picking up on these regularly occurring themes. All of the other photographs, no matter how good they are, are almost like the static on a TV screen. And the other shots, the ones that share some relationship with each other, they're your vision. They're the television picture emerging from the static. As you begin to build up your photographic muscles, the themes in your photographs will be indistinct and out of focus, metaphorically speaking. However, once you recognize those photographs that you are more naturally inclined to take, once you begin understanding where your creativity is taking you, you can start to focus, metaphorically speaking, down onto it. And that's when it starts getting really exciting because once you become creatively self-aware, you can showcase how you see the world through your photography. So let's talk more about the kinds of themes that might develop into your style and which you should keep an eye out for in your photographic portfolio. This is by no means a definitive list, but simply a sample of possibilities which may or may not apply to you. Hopefully, 
you'll find some inspiration in amongst these. Firstly, and most obviously, there's the subject of your photographs, the hashtags that you might attach to those photographs. For instance, there's a photographer by the name of Seth Castile who went viral a decade ago with his amazing photographs of underwater dogs. Seth specializes in taking highly distinctive portraits of dogs by throwing a ball into a swimming pool and capturing the dogs from underwater as they jump in to grab the ball. Seth recognized his niche. He honed in on it and he made it his thing. He discovered his style in a eureka moment when a dog he was photographing kept jumping into the swimming pool and he wondered to himself what it might look like from in the pool. Another example of a photographer whose style is built on subject matter is Alexei Klatov from Moscow. Sorry if I've butchered your name, Alexei, I probably have. In 2016, Alexei came to world attention thanks to his incredible photographs of snowflakes, which he took with his homemade camera system, Frankensteined out of various cameras and lenses. Alexei was inspired to take snowflake photographs after he saw the work of Kenneth G. Librecht, a professor of physics at the California Institute of Technology. And of course, living in Moscow, he was ideally placed to have plenty of material lying around on the ground for his photographs. Incidentally, this is a classic example of working with what you've got. There aren't many snowflake photographers here in Australia, but I suspect they're fairly light on surf photographers in Russia. Some photographers bring their vision of the world to light by means of post-processing. This is one of those niches that tends to rub some people up the wrong way. But it's a simple fact that some photographers became well known through a highly specific post-processing style. The very fact that some post-processing techniques popularized by certain photographers pisses certain people off is proof positive that they are distinctive styles. And anyway, wouldn't it be a really boring world if we all like the same bloody thing? Anyway, I digress. The photographer who immediately popped into my head when I thought about this was Trey Ratcliffe. Trey became famous as the guy that popularized HDR photography. He discovered this technique very early on in its history, wrote a famous blog post explaining how to do it, and from those humble beginnings rode a wave to photographic stardom. He travels all over the world and has accumulated a massive online following of people who love his distinctive HDR processed images. His style is immediately recognizable and he has persevered with it despite regularly getting it in the neck from so-called purists. The perseverance displayed by Trey is a key element of developing your own style. You stick with it, you tweak it, you improve upon it, and you persist because it's what turns you on, photographically speaking. Another example of someone who found their niche in post-processing is Dylan First, more usually known as Firsty. His highly stylized images processed with a specific blue palette proved to be a popular look and he's built up a following of over 1 million on Instagram. I should add at this point that a photographic style should not be considered somehow better or more worthy because the photographer has amassed a massive following in social media. I mean, some might argue the opposite in fact, but nevertheless, it's partly because their images stand out that they do build up those followings. Or to put it another way, the style came first, the followers came second. Leaving aside post-processing wizardry, other photographers find their style using specific photographic techniques. There are all sorts of cool methods that can be applied to photography, and this may be where your style lies too. So for instance, there's a style of photography called Intentional Camera Movement, or ICM for short. This is actually a fairly old technique, as most of them are, but it was recently repopularized by the British photographer Andy Gray. This technique involves deliberately moving the camera during a long exposure, such that the subject matter becomes blurred and abstract. And he has likened his images to the paintings of J.W. Turner, and all right, it's a little bit of a stretch, but I can certainly see that vibe in his photographs. Other camera techniques include deliberate overexposure, that's called high key, underexposure, which is called low key, and long exposure zooms. Sometimes it's a specific geographic location and the documentation of that location that becomes a photographer's theme. There are myriad examples of this, but the one that sprung to my mind 
is an Australian photographer local to me by the name of Eugene Tan. Eugene, better known as Aquabumps, began a photographic email blog based on his images taken around Bondi Beach in Sydney. The blog proved to be a big hit and his style of photography translated well to social media where he picked up a big following. He does travel abroad and photograph other locations, but the core theme of his photography is Bondi and in particular, the historic surfing culture of that location. Of course, some locations such as Bondi lend themselves well to this kind of photography. In the UK, the Cam Diary feed features photographs taken by the pseudonymous Sir Cam featuring the beautiful medieval University City of Cambridge in the UK. There's a huge variety of photographic styles in Sir Cam's portfolio, from portraits to landscape photographs, but the city of Cambridge links everything together and is Sir Cam's inspiration and central theme. It's his style. Sometimes it takes a specific piece of equipment to lead you to a specific photographic style. For instance, ocean photography using waterproof housings has become increasingly popular over the years. And it's this ability to use good cameras in a hostile saltwater environment that inspires many photographers. Clark Little is a Hawaiian photographer who made his name taking incredible photographs of waves from inside of the tube. He found his inspiration when his wife asked for a picture of a wave to decorate their bedroom wall. Unsatisfied with the prints he found for sale, he thought he could do better. So he went out, bought a waterproof camera, took the photograph and changed the entire direction of his life. Clark leverages his impressive skills in Big Surf to capture the close-up interiors of waves that most sane humans would never deliberately swim into. His style of photography is a natural extension of his passion for the ocean, but it would also not have been possible without the development of waterproof camera technology. 10 years ago, there was no such thing as drone photography, but now it's one of the most popular niches. Being able to control a flying camera is a huge benefit to any photographer, but especially so if you suffer from mobility issues. It was this ability to position a flying camera anywhere in the sky that led Jamie and Hudson to develop his style. Jamie ends a young photographer who has made a name for himself taking photographs of marine wildlife near his home in Perth. He also happens to be a quadriplegic and he began using a drone to photograph the ocean because he missed being able to swim and surf in it. He found he had an aptitude for capturing the marine wildlife and pretty soon his amazing photographs of dolphins and whales began getting attention online. So it's pretty self-evident that some photographic styles are not just reliant on equipment, but simply could not exist without them. Who knows what technology will evolve over the coming years and what kinds of photography will evolve from them. One of the most popular styles of photography is to use a consistent contextual link between your photographs. You can find many examples of this on Instagram, but the most famous is probably Murad Osman, who popularized the follow me style of photograph. Murad's idea was to photograph his wife, leading him towards some scenic location by the hand. He's not visible in the photographs, well, apart from the hand his wife's holding, but this greatly contributes to the feel of the photographs. Murad's style of first person photography lets you feel like you're being led to a beautiful location which in turn gives the photos an empathetic vibe that's seen in McCrew 3.6 million followers on Insta. The contextual link that defines a style doesn't have to be physical, it can be thematic too. Brandon Stanton is the brains behind the Humans of New York Instagram account, and his idea was to interview random strangers on the streets of New York and then include that interview with a portrait of them. Brandon's got 11.5 million followers, so there's little doubt that his style of highly personalized photography is a popular niche. Hannes Becker is another landscape photographer with a distinctive style that has proved to be a big hit. His landscape photographs are post-processed using a dark color palette and often include him as a tiny figure in a dramatic landscape in order to better accentuate the scale of the scene. On the face of it, there's nothing massively different about his landscape photography from a technical perspective, but his work stands out thanks to this link, namely him, in many of his shots. All right, so those are examples of photographic styles and the photographers who've become famous for popularizing them. What about your friendly neighborhood photographers? Folks like uh, 
me, for example. Now, the truth of this is that I never really cared what my photographic style was. Many years ago, during the first big Instagram boom, I was paid to attend an Insta meet in my capacity as a vaguely well-known local photographer, a local liaison, if you will. The local tourism agency had hired some big name Instagrammers to attend and the public were invited along to hang out and take some photographs of the local landscape scenery. It was a grim experience for someone like me with autism who's terrible at the whole social chit chat, glad handling, mingling thing. And I knew with absolute crystalline certainty that this was to be my first and last Insta meet ever. Anyway, towards the end of the event when the punters had all pissed off home, I did get chatting to one of the hired celebrities and she asked to see my Instagram feed. She flicked through it and said I had some great images in there, but she said that my feed was all over the place and that I'd never build up decent follower numbers while it was so chaotic. She advised me to concentrate on one style of image and just fill my feed with that. After the Insta meet, I said my goodbyes and resolved immediately to completely ignore all of her advice. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't bad advice if all I had wanted was an increased follow account on Instagram. But I couldn't have given a fuck about that then, and I couldn't give a fuck about it now. I take photographs because I enjoy photography, not because I have some burning desire to be an influencer. Also, I could never restrict myself to one specific style of photo. It would be extremely boring. That being said, I do have a signature photographic style, which has emerged despite my belligerent efforts to embrace all styles of photography and not be pigeonholed. Actually, I have a couple of styles that are evident if you flick through the 250,000 images in my Lightroom catalog, but one is my favorite, and would be the theme of a gallery exhibition if I ever put one on. My signature style of photograph is a silhouetted beach sunset shot. I chance on this style of image down at my local beach, spotted a family out enjoying the warm evening, and I switched out my usual wide angle for a telephoto and shooting directly into the sun photographed them as they crossed a sandbank. When I got home, I was immediately struck by this image and the mood it conveyed to me, and I resolved to try it again the first chance I got. The thing is that prior to then, I was going to extreme lengths not to include people in my shots, and so this was a real step into the unknown for me. Well, that was 14 years ago now, and I'm still taking those silhouetted beach sunset shots to this day. And here's what they look like.
For me, those photographs taken over the course of many, many sunsets during those 14 years have a distinct and almost illustrative feel to them, which I really like. To me, they represent how summertime feels here in coastal Australia. I also think that they have a kind of a street photography vibe to them in the sense that they are candid shots of complete strangers taken in a specific environment. It's just that a beach serves as the backdrop rather than a city. So there we have it guys. I developed the style despite actively trying not to. And if you've been taking photographs for any length of time, you've probably developed one too, whether you're aware of it or not. So dig out the archive, flick through the images and see if you can spot trends, themes or other photographic links that tie your shots together because that is your style. All right. That's it for this video, guys. I hope it has been thought provoking. If it has, and you'd like to see more of this content, you know the drill down there, subscribe button. And if you like the video, smash the ever living shit out of the like button. Till next time, guys, see you later.